Welcome to this evening's formal meditation. Thank you for joining us here at Spirit Fire as a group field of meditators, putting our energy into the world and adding great light to the world. The Scorpio Taurus axis is one of great light, and it is one that cuts through the illusions of uh, self perceived reality. It is that which gets to the core of our own processes of enlightenment and offers to all of humanity that self same process of enlightenment, cutting through desires, cutting through attachments and the wisdom that lies within each person as the same process and energy of transformation. So in other words, it is the wisdom of understanding our attachments, understanding our sense of self, understanding the illusions and the functionality of duality, both sides of that, the illusion and the functionality of duality that leads us along the spiritual path such that everyone, little by little, illuminates their own way. And this is what's represented by the dragon inside us, the dragon of wisdom, as well as the dragon that will eat us raw if we are unaware of that. And so the power of transformation is this power of the Scorpio Taurus axis in which we find ourselves with the full moon. Scorpio is a water sign, and we always take a few minutes before we meditate to just focus a little bit on the astrology um, and then take some of this qualities into meditation for ourselves and for the world. Scorpio is a water sign, and as so, then the water that is represented here it can be the water of attachment, the water of desire, but also the water of consciousness, of intuition, of our psychic and empathic sensitivity, and of the collective psychic current of humanity. So if you have strong water in your chart, it is likely that you are aware of consciousness, passion, the, again, the psychic or empathic currents um, that you perceive and are moved by on a daily basis. But also, water does move or dissipate or dissolve. That would change its flow. And if we think about a river or a stream, we know that we can watch that the water will literally move, will dissipate, or will dissolve that which hinders its flow. And here in the image on the screen, these rocks will become sand little by little because this crashing waves of the ocean will in fact move them, dissipate them, and dissolve them until eventually all that's left is sand moving and flowing with the waves. So in this way, we ought to understand that the flow of consciousness that a human being has, has the capacity to understand and to know, thus to move information into a more refined state, such that we understand deeply the meanings of events, circumstances, and even of life. That we are to relate to one another and merge with one another dissipate the barriers and the blockages that, that stop that or hinder that, and instead um, to relate and merge to one another in a unified or unity state. And equally so, we are to understand that through caring, through nourishment, which is when consciousness and the flow of the heart are allowed to flow freely then all problems within humanity will ultimately be dissolved, dissolved by the flow of caring and the nourishment that naturally flows from that. So the waters of consciousness epitomize in a very particular way within the sign of Scorpio. 
and then illumined ever more fully in the earth sign of Taurus, find their um, f- deep functionality in a psycholog- psychological way of understanding ourselves, understanding others, as well as in the deep psychological states of meditation and the further processes of the path. It is these that lead us to transformation. You and I are in a constant state of transformation. And that has to do with the flow of consciousness. If we really think about it, then every day provides countless opportunities for us to transform our thoughts, transform our beliefs, um, undo some habitual, habitual habits of consciousness or habits of concepts and to instead free ourselves, again, that free-flowing idea, free ourselves from the obstructions and the hindrances that our habits of mind and emotions and behavioral patterns provide. So in doing so, as we undo these habits, as we open up definitions, as we free ourselves of beliefs that worked when we were children and now no longer are functional as adults, as an example, then we are in a constant state of transformation. When we add to that, that that transformation can also have very rich and profound spiritual aspects, then, in fact, we will find that the water sign of Scorpio and its full range of transformational capacity is there to provide all of us with the spiritual path of awakening and the ability to support others on that path as well. Very briefly, the sign of Scorpio epitomizes transformation in that there are multiple uh, animals, mythic or, or factual, that are represented in the sign of Scorpio and they start with the scorpion itself with its belly on the, with its all of its legs on the ground it cannot arise any higher than the ground itself and so it crawls along and is a, in a constant defensive uh, mode with itself so the lower echelon of Scorpio is just that constantly defending, constantly attacking, um, uh, uh, suspicious of just about everything. And then the next layer of Scorpio is is that of the snake, which actually can arise up, get its belly off the ground, get its head up off the ground. And so this speaks of the beginnings of wisdom, the beginnings of detachment, starting to... um, have some perspective and with that perspective then one can gain confidence and be less suspicious of others and gain confidence in one's own capability to to get through a day to have wisdom to have compassion and to understand that life is not centered around defensiveness and defending oneself but that life actually has bigger pictures to offer us. Eventually that leads to the eagle. The eagle, of course, has a great um, scope of perspective and view. Note that the legs of the eagle are scaled because, of course, an eagle uh, and all birds originally were um, you know, millions and millions of years ago, come descend from reptiles. And so that vest, those vestiges are epitomized by their feet. And so that's symbolic for us because of the snake factor and how a snake in rising up off the ground just enough then becomes in a transformational way the eagle, which soars in the highest heavens, which has the greatest view of the ground, the greatest perspective of the ground, but is completely detached from it. With the ego, we also have this 
regal kind of quality to it, this strength, this confidence, this ability to get things done as necessary. There is insight and incisiveness, but there also is a detachment that allows the ego to be a predator. So that that precision of the eagle's flight and how it kills something can also be used as a human being in the skill to understand one's uh, psychological issues, again, one's habits of mind and emotions, and with skill to address them. And even with the skill of detachment to address them, to just know that sometimes you almost have to be surgical within oneself and kind of stop having certain thoughts or stop thinking certain ways or stop repeating certain behavioral patterns. So in that way to be detached, skillful, and almost um, uh, um, harsh with oneself in a certain way, but always for the greater goal of transformation. And then ultimately Scorpio is about dragon. But now it is dragon of wisdom. It is never dragon in a lesser form or just a sort of, you know, malicious form. Never in Scorpio. It is always a dragon of wisdom. So the again, dragon like eagle flies. Dragon like eagle, you know, has its reptilian ancient uh, background. But dragon epitomizes the wisdom quality of ourself, its fearlessness, its cool-headedness, and its detachment. Within wisdom, there is the feminine principle and water and water signs, also our feminine principle, as our earth, which Taurus, its polar opposite is. So we have oftentimes within dragon lore, the idea of the maiden or the sorceress who is of a, of a white magician caliber or the dakinis in the Tibetan tradition who will soar with the dragon and, again, be the epitome of wisdom themselves, the, the women will. So to lead us into our meditation then, we want to take this idea of cool-headed wisdom and the fearless quality of compassion, that these two are the qualities of transformation that all of us will utilize along the spiritual path. And that no matter what we you know, have as a faith base, if we do have one, that we can bring forward within that faith base or within our spiritual path always more wisdom and more compassion through both the qualities of cool-headedness, clarity, detachment, perspective, and selflessness, understanding that nothing really is about ourselves. We are all here for the well-being of other beings. And that equally so, to live that way is to be a hero. It is to stand as in this image, fearless like this, a woman who stands with the torch of illumination, with the orb of wholeness, and meaning that there is only oneness, and she understands that, and so she holds this orb of wisdom, which always represents oneness, and is fearless in that. She has conquered her own fear of the dragon. She stands in a fearless position, which all of us can do, to bring compassion into the world. And so we smile. We take a long, slow, deep breath. We stretch our back, feel our ground, and settle together, breathing in and breathing out.
With a breath, we light our heart and we connect heart to heart with the golden band of light. With the breath, we light the Ajna center at the brow and we connect Ajna to Ajna with the golden band of light. And with a breath, we alight the crown center and we connect crown to crown with a golden band of light. Thus are we one heart, one mind, one world intention. In alighting our heart and alighting the wisdom chakra at the brow and alighting the center of purpose in the crown, let us once again expand these and alight these four humanity. Let us be the light of transformation as a group field for the light of humanity. And as the waters of consciousness are one, let us feel through our meditative ability and intention that we are creating a flow, a flow of transformation in the collective consciousness of humanity through simply illumining our own consciousness through meditation and holding ourselves in a state of illumination. Feel the heart, the brow, and the crown are lighted and grow a great light. And let us meditate for a few minutes, dissolved in this great light.
Let us begin to feel the power of the collective consciousness of humanity as it is illumined and thus freed of the obstructions of beliefs and politics and social norms freed from these things such as the great transformation of human consciousness all around the world is made easier and the lives of all human beings is made more joyous more peaceful more free let us stay focused on the light of the heart the light of the wisdom center at the brow and the light of purpose at the crown and that simply by aligning these great centers of illumination that we align and create the flow of free-flowing transformative consciousness and humanity is invited be spiritually awakened and all the benefits that come with that to the whole world we meditate
And let us help to create the flow of illumination and transformation through perspective and the observer and the wisdom that comes from both of these, from detachment, from a right understanding of our desire nature and a freedom from the clinging and the cravings and the lower sentimentality that often are that which holds a, a human being down, close to the ground, close to uh, lower desires and everyday worries and anxieties. Let us feel the courage of illumination itself, the courage of flight, and the precision also of seeing things more clearly, such that wisdom, wisdom results, and with wisdom, the nurturance of the power of compassion.
It has been said that Scorpio epitomizes the human condition. And that is so on its lower turn of the spiral, that is to say the hindrances, the troubles, the problems that we have as a human being and as a human collective, as well as the path of transformation, of insight, of illumination, of clarity, detachment, observer, leading to wisdom and the right actions of compassion, the right use of its power, the right use of light. And so let us understand as we hold our last few minutes of meditation that this great light generated by the heart, by the wisdom center at the brow, and by an alignment to purpose itself at the crown, that these are our path, that these illumine our way, that these three in their combinations are the transformative power for each of us in our lives and are the transformative power for humanity as a whole. And so we alight them one more time until we generate a great light and dissolve into that great light. Until, in the words of the great teacher, in this light shall we see light. And let us realize that we are that light, that we are the light of the world.
we smile and take a long, so deep breath to complete our sitting. We hold the whole world in that smile. We hold the whole world in our full moon meditation and know that we've been joined and have joined others who are meditating all around the world at the time of the full moon to support the light of the sun and the moon and the light of the human heart and mind. May humanity live this light of transformation. May we all bring it forward in our own lives. May we realize that the wisdom eye that is at everyone's brow is as open as we choose to keep it open. May we realize that the light of the heart can illumine our way, guide us in our words, our thoughts, and our actions. And thus will we live according to the light of the greatest purpose, the purpose of the heart, of its wisdom, and its compassion. We are the light of the world, each of us, in our days, in our lives. Love you all. Thank you for meditating for the full moon. Create your day.